are now streaming live on Facebook for the second of our Monday meets um, with the Willow Domestic Violence Center. I'm the Director of Communications, Will Averill. Thank you so much for spending a little time uh, joining us today. We're going to talk a little bit about rural outreach um, with our rural outreach co program coordinator, uh, Maddie Lockett. Hi, Maddie. Hi, guys. Um, thank you so much for being the, the second of these. So we're still kind of in the early stages. So um, I appreciate your, your being willing to kind of jump in. But I'm really excited to talk uh, about rural outreach and about your position because when I first joined the Willow, um, this was one of the positions that I, that I supervised. Uh, I was a different, you weren't obviously with us yet. We're a different set of, of uh, program coordinators. Um, but I was, it was one of the first areas I really kind of studied and learned about um, at the Willow and the challenges that go along with it. And I think it's such an important part of what we do and something that a lot of people don't really know that much about. So I'm really excited that we can kind of talk a little bit about it today, um, get your perspective and let everybody know uh, what, we're, what we're up to in Jefferson and Franklin County. Um, so I want to just start by saying if anybody has any questions, we love questions, um, you can send them to the, you can, you can post them on Facebook and we will try to get to, to those if and when we have them at the end of our kind of Q&A part here. But we'll start with a little bit of just kind of back and forth. Um, so do you want to kind of tell us about your, first of all, your, your background, your name, your, your, you know, your position, how you got with the Willow, that, that kind of thing. Sure. So my name is Maddie. Um, I just graduated from KU with a major in social welfare. Um, and I actually Congratulations. Did... That's awesome. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so I did my senior year internship with the Willow. I interned uh, for the whole senior year at Shelter. So um, I kind of came from that into this position. So I already I knew some of the ropes um, going in and everything, but I've definitely been learning a lot um, ever since. So um, I love it here at the Willow. I hope to be here for a while. And um, but yeah, but I have been um, working in Jefferson County for about four months now. Okay. Um, uh, unfortunately, I only got a month like doing in-person stuff before COVID-19 kind of took over and everything, but um, it's still been a good opportunity to learn a lot of brainstorming, which is good. So, yeah. Yeah, it definitely, definitely seems like uh, a lot of the work that you do in the rural side of things, and we'll get into this in a little more detail, um, is sort of the more community-based uh, aspect mm -hmm. of what we do, getting out and meet, meeting with people and, uh, and advocacy and, and court and stuff like that. And so it really does seem like the part that has been the most challenging when it comes to, to dealing with it from, uh, from the COVID-19 perspective. Um, so, but just in, in general, you, you know, you started off in shelter and that's obviously got its, its own set of, of challenges. Um, but then you move to a, to the, to a rural, uh, a rural service. What have you found to be the challenges of servicing rural communities? So, yeah, so obviously going from shelter to rural community, I'm going from individual work to more community work. I mean, obviously involves individual working with individuals as well, but it's a bigger picture sometimes. So um, I guess some challenges are, I mean, at least for me as a new uh, employee in the, in the role, um, getting to know the community and everything. Obviously that takes time and everything. And um, it's been, it, it has been really cool to just drive around uh, visit each of the towns and everything, um, you know, when we could do in-person stuff, but, um, right. so yeah, I get, so geographically, I think working in any rural area, it can be a little tricky, you know, because, you know, especially with Jefferson County, it's just a little farther from, um, you know, bigger cities. I do live in Lawrence, so it's a bit of a drive, but, right. um, but yeah, so that's probably one of the bigger ones, um, and so I, a lot of times rural communities are real tight knit. And I think that's something that's really cool um, and valuable, uh, especially coming from, you know, a bigger town like Lawrence is they're so tight knit and everyone knows each other and everything. And I think that's a huge strength 
it can be kind of a pitfall sometimes if, you know, someone in a tough situation, whether it be domestic violence or something else, sometimes on the privacy end, it can get complicated. So that can be, um, you know, uh, one of the challenges, but I also see it as a really, as a really big strength too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I, I think I'm just gonna, just to, to put it in a broader perspective again, for those folks who uh, don't have a lot of experience with what we do in our service area. We, we do cover not only um, Lawrence, but we cover Jefferson County and Franklin County and rural Douglas County, all mm -hmm. of which kind of have their own unique characters. Jefferson County in particular um, doesn't have as many, you know, Franklin County kind of has Ottawa as its larger community and then several other townships as well. And Jefferson County has kind of Oskaloosa as its largest, but there are several that are sort of um, that, are, that, are, that are divided up um, between uh, on, on, on all the sides of Lake Perry. Yeah, so it's, it's a slightly different uh, community with a different set of needs. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, and have you found have you done any work in uh, in in Franklin County at all? Um, I did go to um, one of the jail groups. I went with Hannah, one of our advocates out there, to kind of shadow her because that was something that I think we had going in Jefferson County a little while back. I mean, before I had come in and everything, it's a, it's been at a bit of a lull, so we're trying to get it started up again. If anyone's right, interested, right. yeah. So I mean, even before COVID and everything, it was just a little transition, I think. So I, I did go um, and do that, and that was really fun. We're really hoping to get that started mm -hmm. up. Um, but yeah, I've I've been out there a couple of times for okay, for, okay, yeah, yeah. Um, for when we look at at uh, survivors in uh, rural communities, what are the kind of unique challenges that that they face? Yeah, so I mean, like I said, one of them ge geography. Um, you know, you have a lot of um, you know, farming going on, a lot of livestock raising going on and everything and that can be kind of like you have your big old plot of land and everything kind of remote from even you know the main uh i guess center of whatever town it might be in so um everything's just real spread out i guess is what i'm trying to say so um so that's one of them um something that we've been seeing and kind of thinking a lot more about now that everything is online is internet access um, a really big portion of all rural areas in the U.S. don't either don't have internet connection or a lot of times the connection they might have is pretty weak and stuff. So as we try to think about, you know, different services that we can bring to our community in Jefferson County, um, that's been kind of a barrier, you know, it's, it's just a, it's just a different picture out there. And then sometimes with cell service too, and that's one of our main ways that we can connect to our clients. So those are, those are some of um, the, the barriers, I guess, to services in a rural community. Yeah, that, that, that makes a lot of sense. I mean, certainly, certainly uh, access to services and, and uh, um, one thing that which we're sort of trying to figure out right now is different ways and particularly in Jefferson County in which we can get information to people because mm -hmm. um, it's it not again you do have those difficulties with with getting online service there um, you do have um, sort of a, a disparity of um, area and as well as that you have half of the folks who are kind of a little bit closer to Topeka and half of the folks mm -hmm. who are a little bit closer to Lawrence mm -hmm. so they may not necessarily have heard about us um, where do you see, you know, you've, you've had four months, you just, I, I, I know you're kind of just starting in the world uh, of, of rural uh, outreach, um, but I think some amazing things have been coming uh, out of there from what I've, I've heard. Um, where do you see kind of rural outreach going in the future moving forward? And I know it's a little hard to uh, plan completely because of COVID, but what, what kind of direction do you see that going? Um, I think the number one thing that I see and definitely hope to see would be just i guess more spreading of awareness about you know problems like domestic violence and everything and maybe just fostering a, a culture of like openness around that stuff 
it's never going to be something fun to talk about. It's never going to be something fun to address, but it's still important because, you know, there's, there's people out there um, suffering from different problems like this. So I, I, I can see that growing more awareness and everything. I think once there's more awareness and a little more understanding of it, um, I think that kind of leads the way to more folks getting help. Um, so yeah, that's the number one thing I see. Yeah, yeah. I do think uh, there's, there's a real dedicated volunteer group there, particularly in Jefferson County, that, that is great for, for starting conversations, but I think getting those out into the, you know, kind of the further areas mm -hmm. seems to me to be one of those, those real challenges and one of those ongoing uh, things that I think would be, be great. Um, and you're absolutely right. Having that conversation um, and having the, you know, building the, the, the language around it and having the facility to have that conversation. Um, I know that when we, you know, when the, when the first Jefferson County advocate started, um, they were they were told that they did the, the, the by a few folks that domestic violence wasn't an issue in Jefferson mm -hmm. County and it just not mm -hmm. been an issue. Um, so it was basically going from that zero point of going okay well let's talk about that let's have that conversation and figure out you know is it is it not happening uh, because you 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 don't want to call it that or that's not how you you view it or that's not mm -hmm. how you uh, talk about it and then you know talking to people about you know kind of the vocabulary surrounding power and control and cycles of violence cycles of abuse and opening that up um, and i think that volunteer base has been instrumental in getting that conversation started but i think it's great that that will continue forward and those conversations will continue to happen um in, in terms of uh in terms of, of where those conversations are going to um you know, they, they've kind of been uh, confined to sort of town hall meetings and community meetings that way. I know we're currently in the online world, but are there any other places that you would like to see those conversations go? Any other areas, um, any other groups that you feel like we should continue to pay attention to and work with? Yeah, um, I mean, yeah. I think I, I would love to see more of the conversation happening um, I don't know, maybe this isn't very specific, but just more in the community. Um, like I said, I've only been here for four months, but all of the town hall discussions and everything that I've heard of, it sounds like um, a lot of like heads of organizations, um, heads of businesses have been in on that. And that is awesome and super valuable. Um, I think it would be cool to start incorporating, you know, more people from the communities, neighbors, friends, you know, stuff like that. Um, yeah, I, th I mean, everybody, <laughs> to be honest, um, we'd love to get more involved with, you know, the churches too. That's a really, um, I mean, churches and faith-based communities, those are, you know, a lot of people's sources of hope and refuge. So I think it'd be a really um, cool place to have those conversations as well. Excellent. Excellent. And uh, I know I'm, I'm jumping off script here just a little bit, but if people want to get involved in those community conversations, if they want to host one, if they want to, to pursue one, we might have some folks watching from uh, Jefferson County who might be interested in something like that. Um, what's the best way to go about that? Well, you can definitely get in, into contact with myself or Heather. I don't know if there's any way to put our contact information or I'm sure um, I'm, maybe that's something they could call the hotline about, but we can definitely add it to the recording. So if anybody has a question about it, we can add it to the recording and I'll put it sure. on the, the, I'll put it on the post with this on Facebook as well. So just uh, sure. after this presentation, keep an eye <laughs> on the post and we'll throw that information up there. If it's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. But no, that that's the kind of stuff that we live for. So if anything, or if anyone would be interested in being a part of the conversation or, you know, hosting or starting a conversation like that, we are wide open. <laughs> That's what we're here Sweet. for. So Sweet. yeah, yeah. Um, well, one thing that that I, you know, I, I feel like um, we have been doing a good job of, and and I think is certainly important for all of us as an organization during this time of uh, the COVID crisis, is not only being a sort of beacon of safety for those who are facing domestic violence or human trafficking issues in our service communities, but also providing resources and working with other organizations 
um, outside of our sphere of what we do. Um, in Jefferson County, you know, people have issues that aren't necessarily domestic violence related, but are safety issues of mm -hmm. food insecurity, mm -hmm. uh, if they need assistance with housing, transportation, um, sexual abuse and trauma related issues. Um, what are the partnerships that, that are around that are available to those residents that they maybe haven't heard of or the, that we work with that they should, they should know about? Yeah, so, um, well, we do share an office when we're in the office when, you know, we're not on lockdown. We do share an office with the uh, Sexual Trauma and Abuse Care Center. So they're, they're a good um, resource. We've, we're usually, I mean, we're in contact a lot and everything. We work on stuff together. So the care center, that's a good place to go. Um, there's also the guidance center in town. Um, it's got counseling services, parenting support, um, a lot of other stuff, but those are the two main things I think that they are doing. Um, there's Kansas legal services. Um, that's a big one that we, um, try to pass on to clients, you know, and whatever, no matter the county that they're in. Um, and then I believe uh, the Salvation Army in Topeka, they also do some work out here as well. So, yeah. Okay, great. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, that um, that is wonderful. And if people want to contact the Willow Line uh, for Jefferson County, uh, what's that number to contact? Um, so you could call either me or Heather. I do not have Heather's mem number memorized, but mine is going to be 785 three one two four one five one um i'm sure that'll be up yeah we'll um, throw that up on that yeah yeah so yep and then but you know any questions at all there's always the hotline that's a good place and they can they can um redirect people to us too if they need to so yeah and just to clarify for those who may not be familiar all of our services are available in Franklin and Jefferson County. Mm -hmm. uh, the shelter services are available to those from Franklin and Jefferson County, uh, but we we only have a shelter in in Lawrence. So sometimes um, you'll arrange with people who need it to get them uh, safe shelter in uh, in Lawrence at, at at our shelter. Correct. Mm -hmm. Great. Um, did you have any other sort of um, anything else that you wanted to, to highlight or mention? Yeah, I mean, like I said earlier, any questions, anyone, you know, interested in any partnerships or starting conversations or anything, um, feel free to give us a call. We are super excited for that kind of thing. Um, I did want to mention that we, the Jefferson County program, we are developing um, curriculum and presentations on domestic violence and related issues. Um, and we're able to send um, information and materials to any schools or any other educational organizations that might need, you know, extra things to discuss. Sometimes um, things get a little weird at the end of the year. So I don't know if anyone needs material like that or is interested. Um, we can do trainings as well in issues related to domestic violence and we are more than happy to provide that. Um, and then let's see, I had a couple other things, virtual support group. <laughs> That's something I yep. wanted to plug as well. Um, what is the virtual support group? Glad you asked. It's, um, <laughs> so it's, it's a safe area where if anyone, um, having troubles, DV related, um, can talk about, can get support from our advocates and everything. Um, if you need to just check in with someone, um, that's that's the place you could go. Um, hmm, I'm wondering maybe if we could put the details up for that. I believe last I heard they were doing Thursdays at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. We might want to double check though, but um, I believe our advocates from Franklin County are doing that. Okay, now is that a rural focus virtual support group or a generalized DV virtual support group? Um, that is going to be generalized. Yeah. They decided it was a project that it sounded like they were wanting to work on. I mean, because everyone's on lockdown. <laughs> so right, yes, that right. is, that is open to anybody, but it is being run by the Franklin County. Excellent. Well, we can throw, we get their details of that on, on as well for sure. the re-recording and for, um, anybody for sure. who would like that. So 
Again, watch this space. We'll come back to it. We'll get it on the post. For sure, for sure. And then I guess the last thing I was just going to say is that we do offer assistance in filing protection from abuse orders. So if that's something that someone might need support with, some, I mean, obviously, uh, in situations involving domestic violence, it's never, <laughs> never a fun deal. So if anyone just needs support or needs help just navigating how to fill that out and everything, then we are here for that too. All right, awesome. Well, thank you so much, Maddie. Uh, let me just see if, if we've got any questions here. I didn't notice any during, but I just wanna take a little last minute check um but if anybody does have any any further questions about anything that we've covered here you are always welcome to give us a call on our 24-hour hotline at 785-843-3333 um if you think you might need information or services relevant to jefferson county they can direct you uh, to get a hold of one of the rural outreach coordinators, or we'll also post um, that number as well. Um, and uh, if you have any questions about, you know, further services, or would like any information about volunteering or donating, um, you can check out our website, which is www.willowdvcenter.org. Um, we'd certainly be happy to answer any of your questions there. And there's a bunch of extra information and resources, not just for Franklin and Jefferson County, but for Douglas County and for our Lawrence-based services. So, Maddie, thank you so much for spending an afternoon with us. Really do appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, um, did you have anything else you wanted to plug on a personal note or anything non, <laughs> non willow related? I think that's it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, some people, some people have uh, have gigs or other things that they they the little <laughs> sideline items that they want to talk about. Um, so I just want to always give everybody the opportunity because that's kind of the payoff for coming and talking about work for <laughs> half an hour. But thank you so much, and really do appreciate it. And thanks for all you do. Um, and thank you all for joining us. Uh, next week, we uh, are going to have another one of these at 3 p.m., another Monday meet, um, as well as a presentation at 1 o'clock on Monday. Uh, and I believe that's on domestic violence and uh, pets, talking about DV and, and pets. So that should be pretty fascinating. Please do join us, uh, and we will see you all later. Thanks so much for tuning in. Thanks.